Luke, can you just tell the audience what we're going to look at as I add it to the stream? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So this was a, a crime scene that was documented with a Feral 3D laser scanner. Uh, it is a shooting that occurred in a barbershop. Uh, a male was shot within the barbershop, and the responding police department had a Feral scanner and went in and scanned the entire barbershop to reconstruct it uh, in a 3D model. Let's put that disclaimer out there. This is not an open case, and this is not uh, anything that would uh, taint or, um, you know, this is this is for educational purposes. You use this d during the uh, presentation as well, right? Absolutely. So this is what we we call a fly through video, right? It is a good uh, representation or way to look at the entire scene as a whole. So this is a top down view uh, on the entire crime scene. So if the jury has a hard time or the, the district attorney has a hard time visualizing what that scene looked like with regular traditional photos. You could play this video in court and they could see the entire scene and kind of get better spatial relations to where things occurred. How closely can you scan in on that? Like, in other words, could you stop that and then scan in and the quality stays good? Yeah. So in these fly through videos, this is whatever path you you choose to create it. So it could be a head height walkthrough of the facility. It could be an overhead like this. It could be whatever path you choose. From Lulu Parkland shooting case could have just used this right. Since you brought it up, one of the things um, that Luke does is he scans schools for school security purposes. Luke, why don't you tell them a little about that? Yeah, this is a, a really exciting time, I think, for for preventative uh, efforts to protect our, our most vulnerable kids, right? So Faro has become entrenched uh, in pre-incident planning and trying to prevent bad things from happening before they have to break out a 3D scanner for a mass casualty shooting or for a homicide or, or whatever. So now uh, we're taking 3D laser scanners, we're mapping out schools or scanning schools, and we're recreating them. And then we're creating uh, deliverables where meaning that we're creating a file, an easily accessible file for first responders to have immediate access to if they have to respond for a critical incident in their cruisers in the moment while they're en route. Think of the benefit for this for emergency responders. So, you, you know, you have an active shooter at the school and they have the ability to say, OK, we yeah. have we we know where we're going now. We know where where this person is and what we got to do. And yeah, we have all that information. And what we're starting to see now, going back to VR, you mentioned it before, we'll have uh, SWAT teams or, or school resource officers putting on VR goggles back at the academy and they're training together. They're, they're yeah. training to respond to a, a potential shooter at the school or, or critical threat. Absolutely. We have a course just like this, a VR course for active shooters in the Louisiana State University. Where all we need is a gym. We'll take the officers, we give them their uh, weapons and we will we'll put them through a school like this, and they'll be walking down the halls uh, as like the, the scans that you were just shown, and they'll they'll interact with um, you know the uh, the bad guys in here. You know, Ed, we talked about this so much to see it actually be put into play and to you know hear somebody who's well versed in it, and I know you are as well, Ed. But those VR goggles and to be actually virtually in the crime scene is is just unbelievable. It's over the top. This technology uh, is going to give a bird's eye view of inside that crime scene. Um, we know that the Idaho State Police, they arrived on the scene. Uh, it, that was the first phone call that the captain said and the police chief said they made. They knew that they needed the Idaho State Police and their crime lab. They came in uh, and, and more than likely, Ed, within what, the, the first 12 hours, did these laser scans and so forth? Yeah, usually we want to do these first before we start moving anything. Um, you know, we do our photographs and then we want to get the scans done right away because uh, we can't move anything until the scanner documents and measures everything. And so what they'll do is they'll do, uh, there's three floors, so they'll do individual floors and they'll stitch them together to give you um, three floor plans. You know, the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor. <clears throat> or you know what people are calling the basement the, the first floor the uh, second floor third floor whatever the case may be um and then um you know so they'll put these scanners in each of the rooms um that were there and create these entire floor plans so then you can do a two-dimensional you cut the ceiling off and then you get your two-dimensional um diagram out of each of those floor plans and then you, you can then go into a specific bedroom and enhance that and make it a larger two-dimensional scale and then you do a three-dimensional walkthrough from the 
the position of uh, the height of somebody actually walking into the crime scene. And you can go up the stairs and open doors, go into rooms and, and see exactly how the scanner captured everything. Can you 3D print uh, scan data? The short answer is yes, we do it every day. Uh, I, we just printed out uh, crush vehicles, right? With a 3D printer for a scaled model that you can then go into court and present to a jury, a, a scaled model of the actual crush car that's there. Um, with your guys' permission, I can show you the, the flyer on if you want. Absolutely. Okay, let me share it real quick. Um, just uh, incredible detail on this particular car that we scanned. Um, and you ready? This, I am ready. Okay. So this vehicle was scanned in, I believe, three minutes and 40 seconds with the Freestyle 2 handheld laser scanner. It was brought into our software process, registered in 20 minutes-ish. And uh, this was brought into a 3D printer later, and a scaled model was uh, printed. Lulu in the chat says, highly accurate, but not 100%. Luke, can you talk about that? Yeah, so I, I'm happy to. And this comes up all the time when I go out and meet and give demonstrations to, to departments and district attorney's offices and everywhere. Um, so the way I like to think about it is, is you're going to, at the end of every scan, you're going to have an error rate associated with it, right? So when you go into that Dauber hearing or that Fry hearing, it's going to be a highly accurate data that has been true, tried, and tested, right? Uh, and then additionally, uh, if you think of traditional methods like hand measurements or total stations or, or whatever, you name it, right? The wheel. This, yeah. This is going to be far, far more accurate than traditional methods of capturing that data. So uh, I think we're making a lot of improvements. Will it ever be, you know, within a micro meter of it? No, right? It's going to be right now it's within a millimeter of accuracy, um, which I think is really impressive. Can you reenact the entire crime? Uh, AI and manual input. Um, thank you for that question. Um, I'm not sure if they can reenact the entire crime, but they can take the scene and record everything within that scene, how it is when first responders respond to a crime scene. Well, we can do reconstruction. A port, you know, sometimes we can do shooting reconstruction, ballistic trajectories, and bloodstain pattern analysis. Luke, you want to touch a little bit yeah. more on that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we try to stick to evidence-based, obviously, documentation, right? So uh, animations are great, right? It, it, it gives a real-life view to somebody of what it, it looked like in the moment when it happened, right? But if you're talking about uh, blood spatter analysis or, or shooting reconstruction and all that stuff, obviously, uh, we need to be able to prove that in court. So we have a lot of tools at Faro with these 3D scanners that do allow you to document shootings and blood spatter and then have evidence-based data that you can go present in court and get through a Daubert or a Fry hearing and, and ultimately a conviction. So th for those of you who don't know what a Daubert or a Fry hearing is, that's when typically the defense is challenging the science and um, trying to exclude the scans from getting into the actual case. And then the judge will make a decision based upon bringing in um, several experts to, to see if this technology is accepted within the forensic science community. Who's taken on to this um, uh, quicker than these smaller police departments that have, you know, yeah. small budgets and how are these things funded? Yeah. So uh, great, great question. Um, years ago, when this used to come out, they were 3D laser scanners were very expensive. You know, uh, over the years, though, uh, with with advancing technology and better manufacturing and all that, prices come down a lot. Um, we used to only see larger agencies, you know, our feds and our state level agencies, very large police departments, the NYPD, Boston PD, things like that, picking up laser scanners. Now I regularly have 30 or 40 person departments purchasing 3D laser scanners um, because the price point has come down so much. Now, uh, pricing in general, um, because this always comes up and it's important to talk about, an entire system, meaning the 3D laser scanner, all the software that you would need to, to run and do exactly what you just saw, you're talking 50 to $60,000 ballpark, right? Um, now, funding for a lot of agencies, that's a, that's a big nugget, right? That's a lot. Yeah. Now, now Faro offers uh, grant assistance. So now we have we've teamed up with Lex Pool and Police One. They have grant writers that are assigned to Faro and help our public safety partners find funding. Luke, I admire and respect this technology. Is this a special scanner, or can a novice use other equipment? 
Good question. Like it. Uh, no. So Faro is known for it being very user friendly, especially compared to other solutions that are potentially out there. Um, it is designed to be simple. So the way I like to explain it when I'm teaching people is almost anybody can just scan a scene because you set it up and you put in your project number, you pick your setting and you hit go and you walk away, right? Uh, anybody can scan. The software, you'll need to go through the Ferro training certification course to learn the software and learn how to bring these scenes together and create these amazing fly-through videos and scene-to-goes and stuff like that. 